Okay, I'm Mark Carroll. I'm a water and wastewater engineer with Archer Daniels Midland, commonly known as ADM. I hold a class four industrial treatment license and a class A municipal. I've been with uh, three Fortune 50 companies in my career, the last 16 with ADM. I really like ADM and I really, really enjoy what I do. I'm here to talk about reverse osmosis because my company runs a lot of RO projects, a lot of RO systems. Anything from a 30 gallon per minute system on up to 5,000 gallons per minute. The problem is I, I kind of view these systems as a, uh, a necessary evil situation. They work and we need RO quality water, but they always come with operational hassles and headaches that, that just drive me mad at our various plants, and trying to keep them running the way I want them to is always difficult. So I've always had my eye out for a better way to run RO. And I think a company that we came across has one of the answers to that. So this morning I'll give you a quick overview of ADM, and we'll talk about this closed circuit reverse osmosis process that we came upon from the Salatech. And then I'll describe three case studies where we have implemented that to great advantage at ADM. And then I guess we'll head into our question and, question and answer session. So first of all, ADM. We're the world's largest processor of agricultural commodities. Everything from corn, soybeans, sunflower seeds, canola, cotton seeds, peanuts, almonds, you name it. We process it into food ingredients, um, provide it to many of you in this room as our customers, and for uh, industrial products and uh, fuels. We're probably most famous for high fructose corn syrup and fuel ethanol in your gas tank. And um, to do this, we need a lot of RO. So we've got some sustainability goals that are important to us like everyone else. I'm going to skip through this in the interest of time to move through it, but we do have some very aggressive sustainability goals that we're meeting. Okay, a quick mention on cross-flow velocity and cross-flow um, movement through a spiral membrane. With spiral round membrane filtration, the majority of your water is going through the membrane and ending up as product water or permeate. However, there is a significant component that is rejected and moves along tangentially or parallel to the membrane surface, and that is actually very important, both that flow and that velocity is critical to scouring off phalanx that accumulate on the membrane. So it's not, uh, it's not something we want to forget. So remember that as we go on, because I'll mention it again. So here we have a traditional three-stage reverse osmosis system. It's three stages because you're going to need that to get what I would consider a respectable recovery. Everyone in here is here for sustainability. We're trying to squeeze as much water out of the system as we can. And to get 80% plus recovery, you're going to need three stages. <coughs> Unfortunately, that comes with some serious drawbacks. So as you can see, in this first stage, you've got the water feeding in, a split occurs, the permeate comes off, and the reject is moved down into this second stage. A second split occurs, the permeate is pulled off, and the reject is moved down into the third stage. Okay, the problem is that you've got this wide variation in concentration gradient from the front end elements in the first stage to the tail end elements in the third stage. You're hyper concentrated down here and you're very dilute up at the front. This creates all kinds of problems in terms of scaling down here in the, the tail end, because you're really hammering these membranes. And then up at the front, you're actually over fluxing your lead membranes here because you're actually pushing too much water through the membrane and you can have problems with colloidal solids fouling and then down in the end you have scaling. So that's the first problem with a three-stage system. Second of all, you run into the problem with this feed pump over here at the front. This guy is responsible for doing so much, it's a jack of all trades and a master of none. It's gotta do three things, and if it varies on any of them, the problems occur. So it's gotta feed, obviously, the requisite amount of water for your RO system. It's gotta generate the necessary pressure to, for transmembrane pressure, and then it also has to maintain the appropriate cross-flow velocity in your membranes. And so the tricky part is, that's easy up here, it's difficult down here. So your pump ends up being designed to maintain the appropriate pressure in your third stage and the appropriate cross-flow velocity, which means up here, you've got way too much pressure and way too much velocity, so you're wasting energy. This pump will run at 100% load all the time, 
wasting energy. <clears throat> it also makes the system very inflexible. If you change anything with that pump, if you slide to the right on the curve, you end up with not enough pressure down here in your third stage. If you slide too far to the left, you'll end up with too little cross-flow velocity in your second and third stage. So there's not much you can maneuver there without causing problems. All these, this disparity in the flux here between the very dilute front end and the very concentrated tail end leads to increased CIP frequencies, which is the headache for all of us, and low, uh, shorter membrane lifespans. When you do finally come to time to do a CIP on these systems, to do an effective CIP on a three-stage system, you need to do each stage independently. Now you can cheat like we do in a lot of our plants and try to do it all at once because it's quicker, but what you end up doing is that the stuff you clean off your first stage, you end up just pushing down into the second stage and the third stage here, and you'll make a bad fouling problem even worse and uh, create more problems for yourself. So we've been looking for a better way to do this. <clears throat> so here's what we've come upon. This is a system from the Salatec. And uh, right off the bat, you'll notice that it's a single stage with very short membrane arrays. Whereas in the previous system, we had 16, I'm sorry, 18 membrane modules in series that the water has to flow through. With a Desalitec system, you have five, and it's a single stage. And yet this single stage is able to achieve a recovery from the full range, on down to a low, if you wanted that, of say 60%, on up to the maximum that your water chemistry will allow. We should point out that the recovery you can get from a, an RO system is dependent on your water chemistry. So if you have very, very high quality water, the system will allow you to get 98% recovery. Again, all in a single stage, which is very unique. The other thing you'll notice is that there's now a second pump in the system. This pump's sole job here is to maintain cross-flow velocity. That's all it does. So if your design for your system is, let's call it 30 feet per second cross-flow velocity to scrub off those phalanx, this pump is always running at the appropriate speed and pressure to maintain that 30 feet per second. You don't have to worry about it. That, lead, that frees up your front end pump to do what it needs to do. So how does this actually work in operation? Well, just like a, normal, a traditional system, water's fed in at the end, you've got a split occurring, and your permeate is taken off. But here's where it differs. Your reject, instead of being sent to drain, is brought around, mixed back in with the feed water, and brought into a continuous loop. So during a closed circuit cycle, and for in our plants that cycle runs uh, roughly 10 to 20 minutes, depending on your water chemistry, the RO system is running at 100% recovery. So wrap your minds around that for a second. 100% recovery, there is no reject. What that means, of course, is that the system is slowly cycling up. The concentration of dissolved solids in there is concentrating up, and that's what we want to happen. But you'll notice with these short membrane arrays, they're only five modules long, the flux distribution from front end to tail end is now very uniform. The actual feed water that these membrane modules are seeing is pretty, pretty much the same from front to back versus the traditional three-stage system where you have very dilute at the front and hyper-concentrated at the end. So the fact that it's concentrating up is normal, except, but the advantage is that it's concentrating up in a uniform fashion across your membranes. So you end up with a uniform, a higher average flux for all of your membranes versus very good flux at the front and very poor flux at the rear. In, a, in this system, you end up with a, like I say, very high average flux across these. That also extends your time between CIPs and gives you longer membrane lifespan. Now, because this pump, the feed pump here, has been freed up to do other duties, it gives it a lot of flexibility. So when the cycle starts, everything is very dilute, and let's say you're at a, a TDS concentration of uh, 250 microsiemens. You don't need much pressure to generate the permeate flow that you want. So this pump, the VFD that's controlling it, is at minimum power draw, and it starts there. As the loop slowly concentrates up, the feed pump slowly ramps up and maintains just the minimum pressure needed to produce the permeate you need. This pump down here, our circulation pump, 
is taking care of all that cross flow velocity. So you end up with a, an overall lower net energy usage per kgal of permeate produced. In our situations, we've seen approximately 12% lower energy usage per kgal of permeate produced. In the uh, previous system, let's flip back to that. This is a very static system. It's always running at approximately the same flow, approximately the same concentrations, approximately the same pH, and it's got a lot of surface area. That is a recipe for biological growth. And this is the problem we have at all of our RO systems. Things like all this surface area, and they start growing. However, in the Desalitec system, you've got this wildly changing concentration over the period of a cycle. So let's say a cycle is 17 minutes. You start out at a conductivity of 250 microsiemens. By the end of the cycle, you might be up to 6,000. So those organisms that are comfortable growing at 250 microsiemens don't want to grow at 6,000. The osmotic gradient across their cell membranes is too high. So this system has a terrific inhibitory effect on biogrowth. We've been uh, very pleased with that. You'll also notice that being a single stage, when it does come time to do a CIP, you've got a single stage. So CIPs for us, by the time we drag the chemicals out of the storage room and by the time we go through a two-phase CIP and then bring a system back up, it might be six hours for a CIP. On a three-stage system, that turns your CIP into nearly an all-day deal. Your RO is down all day. With a, with a closed circuit process from Desalitec, it's six hours. It's a third of the time to do the CIP because it's a single stage. Now, once you reach the end of the cycle, and the cycle is determined by your water chemistry and what your modeling has shown you can set for recovery, the system goes into its purge mode, and a plug of feed water is moved through the pressure vessels and flushes out the brine and moves it down through the brine and then is dropped out and discharged as reject. A purge cycle runs for about 80 seconds, give or take, and during that time, you are still producing permeate. Your RO system does not go down. It continues to make permeate, but it just discharges all the brine. After about 80 seconds, the brine valve closes, and the system goes back into normal recirculation. So let me show you some three case studies where we've implemented this in our plants and uh, how it's worked out for us. Okay, the first one started out as an overall pilot project uh, to look at wastewater reuse at our um, Frankfurt, Indiana soybean crush plant. We, we wanted to look at, could we do closed loop recycling there? So one piece of that, there was going to need to be an RO piece in there. And years earlier, I had heard of a company called the Salatech, and I had gotten their sales pitch on it, and it really sounded like a lot of smoke and mirrors. It sounded too good to be true. So I didn't pay much attention to it. But I did a little more research, and it sounded promising. I went out to Los Angeles and looked at a couple, looked at a couple systems that were running out there with the LA uh, County Sanitation District and heard nothing but rave reviews from the operators, not from salesmen, but from the actual operators. They said the thing just works. We don't mess with it, it just works. I said, okay, that's, that's pretty good. I'm willing to, uh, to check this out. So we rented a Desalitec pilot unit, and that's what you see down here. This, this picture isn't terribly exciting because the containers are all closed up but this is our pilot setup. Over here on the right is our, um, our laboratory, an EQ tank that we dragged out of the boneyard. The blue thing here is a Coke uh, hollow fiber membrane MBR, and then our permeate collection tank from the MBR, and then inside here is our magic box. That's the Desalitec system for our RO. So for the first three months of this pilot, we ran it getting the MBR stabilized and producing consistent good permeate. At the end of that three months, it was time to start feeding the Desalitec RO. At this point, I was really pleased with the Coke MBR. It was running very, very well, trouble-free, and producing very high-quality permeate. But it was high-quality permeate for an MBR. As far as it being high-quality feed water for an RO, that's another deal. If you look over here in these red numbers, the COD, 80 milligrams per liter, that's way higher than I would want to be feeding an RO system. Similarly, this TOC at 8 milligrams per liter, that's about double what I'm comfortable feeding to an RO. So, and you notice the conductivity is starting at 1,500 microsiemens. 
And this is what we're going to be feeding our RO system with. So I figured we'd be fouling the membranes in three or four days and cleaning twice weekly and going through all the headaches that I associate with RO. Lo and behold, we went the entire two-month pilot without CIP once. And that's on wastewater, wastewater permeate, not one CIP. By the end of the pilot, we were at 90% recovery, again, on wastewater. And you'll notice, um, we took some data here. The start of the cycle, the pressure in our system was 130 PSI. By the end of the cycle, it was at 210 PSI. So that's that ramping up feature that I was telling you about, using a better average, all, average energy usage. Our cycle time was 41 minutes. That's uh, quite long for these systems, but uh, it, it had to do with uh, starting with such a high conductivity. And um, overall, we were just very, very pleased with the whole operation. It was uh, just a wonderful system. And so based on that, we decided to build a full scale system. That system actually is under construction right now and will start up in June. And here's what it's gonna look like. So we're gonna start off with some well water. We'll introduce some ozone to oxidize uh, iron and manganese. We'll catch that precipitated iron and manganese in a Schreiber fuzzy filter, which we've also been very impressed with, but that's a different technology, different story. We'll run that through softeners, put it in our reused storage tank, and then our wastewater will come from our split box. We'll run that through a Coke MDR and mix that into the reused storage tank. From there, the water will go into uh, bag filters, through an atlantium ultraviolet unit or dechlorination and sterilization. That's dechlorination without any SPS. We've also been very, very impressed with the atlantium UV unit, but again, that's a technology story for another day. Run it through cartridge filters and then into our Desalitec RO, which will provide feed water for our boilers and other upstream processes. Again, this process will start up for us in June. The next case, is we, we, came, we decided to, we were so impressed with the initial pilot in Frankfurt that we decided to buy a production unit, a small one, 30 gallons per minute, and put it at our Lubbock, Texas cottonseed facility. The goal there was to increase energy efficiency of our boiler. So we put the system in, and it's running at 88% recovery with no pH adjustment, I, I might add, and doing a good job for us. But beyond that, you'll notice I've noted here CIPs every quarter. We're going, actually it's uh, better than every quarter, we're going four months between CIPs on this system, which is just unheard of for me. To give you some, some feel for that, at our worst plants, at our worst performing ROs, we're, going, we're, uh, we're CIPing every week. So, and that just drives me nuts. And here we're getting a system that's gone four to six months between CIPs. I was so flabbergasted by this, after about eight months of running, I pulled a uh, membrane module out of the system and sent it off for autopsy. And the report came back with some of the usual um, foulings on there. We had some aluminum fouling on the membrane, some silicates, but there was a line in there that mentioned zero evidence of biological activity on the membrane surface, which I never see. I, you know, a, a good report will come back with a little bit of activity. This one said zero evidence. Uh, so, that, what that tells me is that the Desalitec system, that inhibitory effect that I described, does indeed work. As far as the results from the system, on our boiler we went from 7 cycles to 100 cycles, saving us over 21 million BTU per year just in blowdown energy, and using an average industry cost of 391 per million BTU of natural gas, that came out to about $83,000 per year in savings just on the boiler blowdown. So this system is humming along in our plant, and we love it. Now, going up the, uh, up the scale in terms of flow rate, our third case study was at our 400 megawatt cogeneration plant in Decatur, Illinois, producing steam and power for our very large complex there. We needed to expand our RO capacity at this cogeneration plant, but what we did want to do was expand our RO headaches, which we have plenty of there. So we looked at Desalitec, and decided to purchase a 1200 GPM unit there. Now our legacy systems, this, this gives a chance to do an apples to apples comparison with our legacy systems because they're sitting, you know, very close. If, if this picture were expanded, you could see some of our crummy legacy systems. At any rate, they run at about 75% recovery due to hydraulic complexities. Um, a a three-stage system is very, very difficult to change anything on, as I mentioned, they're very inflexible. 
if you, if you need to change recovery or you need to change pressures, you end up messing with manual valves. We try to um, blind off pressure vessels to keep the cross flow velocity at the, at the appropriate point, and it just never works. So they run at 75% recovery. Our um, the Salatech system is running at 88% recovery. And this translates to um, a, a water savings of over 120 million gallons a year just in feed water and a 40% reduction in brine production. If you use an average industry cost of three bucks per kgal, that saves us over $370,000 a year just on feed water. That's not counting the savings in CIPs and all this. The CIP frequency on our DeSaltec system compared to our legacy systems. Legacy systems are cleaning at every three weeks, sometimes sooner. The DeSaltec system goes a minimum of six weeks between CIPs, and I'm fully confident it would go much longer, but the limiting factor is aluminum fouling due to aluminum, too much aluminum sulfate being used upstream in our water treatment plant. So uh, if we could ever control that, we'd get an even longer lifespan or duration between CIPs in this. Now here's an interesting um, point on the flexibility of the system, because this side-by-side -side comparison is neat. The water quality in our Decatur complex varies dramatically by season. And this is due to farmer planting. We have a lot of runoff from farmer fields right into our surface water supply, which feeds these systems. So in very late fall, winter, and very early spring, we have very good water quality. And then spring and summer during planting season, the water quality goes to hell. So in the past, we've tried to take our legacy systems and take them from 75% recovery on up into the 80s, the high 80s for recovery, which is what the models tell us we should be able to do and we end up with all those difficulties that I described. The, the system won't balance. We try to take um, pressure vessels offline to keep the hydraulics in line, and we always end up just creating more headaches for ourselves and ending up creating premature fouling. So we just leave them at their 75% recovery year round, just because it's a hassle to try to alter the recovery on the systems. On the Desalitec system, we walk up to this touch panel right here, and we change the recovery from 80% to 88%, and voila, it's done. The whole system automatically adjusts to a higher recovery without us ever having put our hands on a single piece of equipment. It's wonderful. Complete flexibility. You can change recovery, you can change feed pressure, you can change, you can turn down your permeate production if you don't need that much that day, all at the touch of a button without ever touching the equipment. We're just thrilled with that. You also, can, can view, they have an application where you can see the whole operation of your RO system on a smartphone. So you can troubleshoot from a smartphone if, if your engineers are remote or not on site at the time, and if you are so inclined, you can even make adjustments to your system via a smartphone. That's how flexible the system is. Now, I wouldn't recommend adjusting your system via a smartphone, but it sure is handy for troubleshooting. So we've been very, very impressed with the system. It's done what it's supposed to. And um, we're a big proponent of DeSalitec's closed circuit reverse osmosis. So what's it done for us? We're getting at our plants the maximum water recovery that we can get, whatever that happens to be. Again, recovery is a function of your water chemistry. It's not a function of the equipment. And typically, the DeSalitec's closed circuit reverse osmosis system will produce um, 2 to 3% better recovery than, say, ROSA, the, the modeling software will predict, because there's safety factors in the modeling software that account for that hyper concentration in the tail end of the third stage, and you don't have that problem with this closed circuit system. At any rate, it will get you whatever your recovery is, it will get that recovery, and it will do it in a single stage. There's also a much more uniform, there's also a much more uniform flux rate across your membrane. So your average flux across your five membrane array or across all the membranes in your system will be slightly higher than you would get with a traditional system. You also get a longer membrane lifespan out of that and increased duration between CIPs. Unmatched flexibility. That's what I was just talking about. The system will do whatever you want it to do. You can make the changes you want from a touch panel and walk away. You never have to change a manual valve. You never have to check your flow in your third stage. It all happens automatically and works well. Bio growth and scaling being inhibited. 
We've seen that in practice, like I discussed with our Lubbock system. We've also seen that in, our, in the large uh, Decatur system. It works. This cyclic nature of the TDS concentration starts low, goes high, drops low again, goes high, just wreaks havoc with biological growth, and we love that. Reduced energy consumption. In our apples to apples comparison, when we have our legacy system sitting next to our uh, Desalitec system, we see an average of 12% lower energy consumption per K gallon from the produced. Very pleased with that. All of this that we've been talking about comes with standard RO components. The membranes don't matter, you can get them from Hydronautics or Dow or Osmonics or wherever. They all work the same, it's fine. The electronics are all Allen Bradley, valves are James Berry or Bray or whatever your preference is, it's off the shelf. Same with all your instruments. We use Rose Mount, but you can they'll use whatever you prefer. So it's all off the shelf. Along with that, the actual skid design and skid build is extremely maintenance friendly. Some of our legacy RO systems, if you want to get to the high pressure pump, you better get on your back and crawl under because it's buried somewhere in the stack. The Desalitech design lays everything out right in front of you. You can walk up and put your hand on every motor, every instrument, every valve without even having to lean over. So when it does come time to do any maintenance, you simply, your maintenance guy just walks up and starts unbolting some things without having to do any body contortions to do any maintenance on a thing. Overall, we've been very pleased with that. For us in RO, this has been the first major breakthrough we've seen in decades. RO really hasn't changed much at all in the last 20 years. The membranes have improved dramatically, but the process of pushing water molecules through a semi-permeable membrane, same, 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 year after year after year. The Desalitec closed circuit process is the first major change we've seen, and it works for us in practice, and we fully endorse it. Thank you very much.